computer. There we yes, go. Yes, government right is going to ban Zoom altogether if they, if they find us drawing new. You think? OK, so but can you jump uh -huh. into a class in another time zone? Would that be OK? Yes. Because a new job. Who wants to ban Zoom? Do that. Yeah, I think you might want to do it. It's a great and, and Nobody, Europe, I'm just kidding. OK, and the European class, it, which is on which is on Thursdays, starts at 8.30 p.m. Uh, India time. So, yeah, I wanted to join last night, but then I, I didn't. It's hard to build it in. All right. I've got, OK, Aaron, I have Sandra. There's Anuja. There's Diana. Diana, I'll take a look at your kitty in just a second. OK. Claudia. Give it. Tony. Lisa. Jeannie. China. Nice big class. I like it. Amy. And I start by taking out the whites. Yeah. So that you will start by like going into these areas, the rope, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Here. There's a lot of there's a lot more white on this cow. So I'd get the whitest areas here first and uh -huh. then Pull up because that toning that you've done will be really well, it might work really well for this area, right? Like where I'm pointing here and here. Yeah, try it. <laughs> it, my, it seems complicated, but. Uh, just take it, just take it uh, uh, shape by shape mm -hmm. and think about the biggest shapes. Don't worry about every shape. Think about the shapes you can see. Okay, and today is 619. Okay, I'm about to send everybody a text so you'll be able to see. Please deliver all your stuff and I'll take a picture. Actually, do I have that? Can I take a picture of this cow? I'll also send a, a picture of the cow. Okay, so I just sent a picture of the cow, the first uh, set of lines. To your, um, to your WhatsApp. So everybody should be on this. If you didn't get this, let me know. Everybody should be on it. You know, it's so interesting to me, um, Anucha, that this class has become so international, just naturally, <laughs> in its focus. I feel like all the other classes tend to stick to their region, but everybody is, um, we have a lot of people from different places coming into this class. So, I, you know, that's good to me. That's a really good way for people to meet. How many of you, yeah. like, know each other? I just know, well, I work with Tony, so I know Tony. And right. Now we've been seeing each other, so I've seen Rashmi and I've seen Philip from the Bangalore Bureau, but I don't know them. Yeah, and you don't know these other guys, and you've never had, uh, worked with um, uh, any of I these I know that people. Kaina is uh, Sunny's daughter, who is our yep. colleague in Delhi, but I've never met her again, except here. Okay. Yeah, so no one nice. knows. No. That's wonderful. I like it. So this is a great way to meet. It's a great way for people to meet each other. Yeah, if anybody here visits Delhi, not even the Bureau, if you just visit Delhi, you should hit us up. I would like to meet. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially you. Yeah, let us on an airplane again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. anybody ever goes again. on an airplane again. <laughs> if that ever happens, yeah. But um, uh, Claudia, how did you travel to Germany? Did you drive? No, I took the train. You took the train. How was that? Did they have people sit 
in their own seats or how did they do social distancing for that? Uh, well, they don't. Mm. <laughs> oh, you just have oh. to wear a mask, but okay. um, yeah, train is packed. Oh God. <laughs> Was it packed? Wow. Leah, I'm trying to get a picture of a cow without her lines. Oh, uh, let me mail? send it to you. Thank um, you. But, hold I on. Trouble finding the details. You know what? I didn't I send it to you guys last night? Last night you did, but it's Here, hold on. Let me email. pull it. Is Can it you? okay if you don't follow the lines, like, like the grid? If you don't follow the grid? Um, well, if you don't follow the grid, it won't look the same as the picture. So it just depends kind of. Because hmm? even when I'm following the grid, I'm not able to get it right. So it's like. I'm not able to get it right right now because one ear is going all the way up and the okay. other one like just like a ear of a bunny, like really flat. Well, it just depends on, like I said, how you, uh, how close you want to get to this original. So that's, that is your decision, right? Like, so if you don't follow the grid, it will look different than this realistic impression. But if you, if, if you feel like you want to do something different, you should do it. Just know that it won't look like this. So it just depends on what your goal is. Does that answer the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Um, hold on. I'm just looking for what I sent everybody last night. The big question is, I've got it on my computer, but I don't want to interrupt the drawing. Hmm. Oh, and next week, it'll be too late for you guys. Never mind. India, it'll be too late. Um, I'm going to do another set of drawing classes, beginning drawing classes. I'll schedule one for the India time zone, but I don't have it in place yet. Oh. I want to. What is the beginner's class? What do you do in the in the? So I teach, uh, I teach how to draw a lily. Oh, okay. So, and it's really, I like it because it's a freehand class. I walk you through a drawing and I talk about the principles of drawing, like the sort of general, yeah, Claudia, you would like this class. And actually I have, so I have one, actually that's not true. So I have one that I'm thinking about doing at 7.30 London time, so 8.30 p.m. your time on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But that will be after our other class. So if you want to take either one or both of those classes, you would be totally welcome. Okay, yeah. When are you yeah. starting the class? Uh, it's just going to be one or two classes. I need to make a video oh, of okay. this. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, email, I'll email you guys all the details and you can decide if you want to join. So mm -hmm. here I'm giving a free class so that I can make a video that I can sell on my website. So, so <laughs> uh, and I don't think you guys actually show up in any of the videos. I think or your voices do, but I don't think we actually see you. So uh, these are so I can create instructional videos while working with a group. So I'll send the information out. Um, yeah, Claudia, you would like this class. If you haven't taken it, you would like it. For those of you who have taken it some many times, you might find it boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's see. Ah, here are the baby cows. Save. Save to drive. Okay, hang on, Sandra. I'm just trying to figure out how to get I've got it from last night, don't worry. Oh, yeah, but I'll put it across the thread anyway, because I think Thank that's you. a good thing to yeah, do. Yeah, then I can get it bigger. Uh -huh. oh, wait. That's wait. Let's see. Get shot here. Did you say we have a WhatsApp thread? Yes, I just sent it. I sent a little picture of the cows, and now, oh, let's see. Come here, you. Arg. Oh, wait, there we are. Cool. Okay, so I just sent you guys all a picture of the cows. You should be on this group, Jean. Let's see. Are you on this group? Yep, you're there. Um, I just sent a picture of the cows to you all through the WhatsApp thread without any lines on them. So you can actually see it without the blocking of the lines. 
okay if the picture doesn't turn out like never kind of emergency. totally it's totally okay kind of as long as you're happy with it that's the most important thing oh nice gene very fast good good yeah nice good drawing gene good drawing i like it Yes, it looks I like, like cows. I like the big cow, but not the little cow. Uh, the little cow, let's see. So you need like more white. I'm looking at it right now. So you need, so his little nose is, it's a little bit narrow. So his nose is a little bit wider and boxier than you have it. I'm pointing, can you see Jean on the screen? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here it needs to be wider. And then of course there's this light area. So. Cows' noses and animal noses are often very square towards the end here. So box that up a bit. So it's that outer shape. Nice. I like it that you did this in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, but that's the, but that's because Jean's been doing this for four years and she's working with the medium that allows you to go fast. Yes, yeah, I just finished. I just finished my grid, so there's. That. Okay, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I was having trouble doing math. I haven't had any coffee yet. Yeah. Seeking off. Use your calculator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should have done that. I don't think the grid has been like revolutionary for me. Because at least when I drew lines, people could tell they were lines. Earlier, they, it would have just been abstract art. <laughs> I, the reason I'm having you guys work with the grid is not that I want you to stay with this forever. Or as Kaina said, you have to follow it exactly. I'm trying to train you on where things actually are on a, on a flat surface, when you're, what the shapes actually are. They're different than what we think they are. Has anybody noticed that? Have you found that like if you were to try and draw this on your own, like you'd make things too big, too small, not in the right places. Um, totally. The grid helps you learn to see that. Eventually we move beyond the grid. Eventually you learn, uh, what, we, what we're learning in figure drawing right now is, and I'll probably introduce as a still life of some kind for, for you guys, is where it's not a flat thing, you're looking at something that's um, three dimensions, is that you start sort of proportionally measuring things. So you lay in his head and then you relate, you see how, you, you see how big is this head in relation to this, right? So you do more relational drawing, but until you kind of understand intellectually how different things are than you think on the screen, the grid is really helpful. And actually, quite frankly, sometimes I still use it. When I have a really complex, um, when I have a really complex drawing, uh, usually involving buildings, I will often use a grid to help me with perspective issues, make sure I've got everything right. So since we're at the beginning stages here, that's what that grid, this is the point of that grid.
to the orange uh, and the yellow line, so the red and the yellow lines. So we yep. just go deep into it. <laughs> yes, then I want you to go line. into the details as you see fit. However, my suggestion is that once again, you work from bigger shapes to smaller. So instead of getting caught up in this detail here, you yeah. work the areas where there's really extreme uh, contrast uh, definitions. So there's this shape, this big white shape, right? And then there's yeah. the nose shape. And then there's some darks in here. Yeah. Right? And a light shape in here. So don't make yourself crazy trying to draw every line. I want you to, to start with the biggest shapes and go down. Um, when I demonstrate charcoal to you in this um, uh, and the subtractive technique that Claudia is trying right now and Jean is doing, you'll see that like you don't, hi Olga, hi, <laughs> welcome, that's okay, jump on in. Um, you can draw a grid or you can try Olga doing the, doing the subtractive technique with charcoal and try to eyeball it. It's up to you, you decide. You can use a pencil, a charcoal, whatever you want to try and draw. Yeah, I think these. I will try with charcoal. Thanks. Yeah, and um, uh, these are the these orange lines are the first ones, and these yellow lines are the second ones. All right, let me add you in. Has anybody else joined since I have? Nice, love it. Yeah, I have to say I regret not doing the subtractive method because it's much easier to do values. It really it is, is. Like and to focus on bigger shapes. Like that's the, the sort of shapes that, that run, the bigger shapes that sort of run continuously. Pencil is just asking for. I mean, um, I'm doing nitpicking. charcoal, but without subtracting. And it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not working as well. So that's interesting, Sandra. It's interesting to note that. You're, um, you're really good about trying and then observing as you try. Uh, yes. I think there's a lot of learning that happens in that process. It's not for everyone. Not everyone is brave enough to do it, but I think that's awesome. Oh, good. Because I don't think my cow is going to look great. Well, the, ob the object is not always to do a great cow. It's to but try. <laughs> and so long learn. as it looks like cow, as I suppose. Right, as long as it I'll looks like happy. a cow. Or you learn by the next time how not to do the cow. Like, right? Like, yeah, who is I, I talking to? I won't do it like this. Right. I was talking, I had some friends over last night and we were talking about like house stuff. And um, one of them was talking about the first tiling project he did in his kitchen. And, you know, he totally like messed it up, right? He messed it up. He made a couple mistakes, serious mistakes. And, um, and he knows that, you know, he was talking about like, so I know the next time I'm doing it, it's going to be better. <laughs> Is that <laughs> learning curve worth it for me? He said, like, he decided on tiling, it probably wasn't. But, um, but you know, for drawing, you're here to learn to draw. So the learning curve is immense with every drawing you make, regardless of whether it works or not. Also, um, to like keep it in focus, I mean, drawing is, drawing is, a, a, oh, you're all in a class and classes tend to um, bring up a little stress, even if you are not, it's a manageable stress and it's not a bad stress, but being in a class situation, I never perform well in a class, but I love taking classes. So I've always let go of my final product in my class because I know that then afterwards I will take what I learned and apply it. So I kind of expect, uh, let's right. see, Rashmi looks pretty good. Yeah. The snout of the cow on uh, right is, look, is looking a bit bigger in my uh, I think you got it. It's pretty much in the whole box and you pretty much have it. Okay. So yeah, I think you got it. It looks good to me. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'd say it looks good. Uh, what you're probably noticing, Rashmi, is a, um, hold on, Olga, I'll add you to this group. Um, what you're noticing is a dissonance between what you think is happening versus what should be, what, what you think should be happening versus what is actually happening. Yeah. So remember that there's a translation that happens when we go from two dimensions to three dimensions to two, like we're translating, 
right? We're translating shapes. So we're trying to create the illusion of three dimensions, but we're working on a flat surface. So that just means things that you observe in a 3D environment and you're used to thinking about in a 3D environment, the shapes are different in when you, when you apply it to two dimensions. It's a language that you're learning. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, when we draw that road, yeah. right? We draw the road and we draw it going up like oh, this. Yeah. We know that that's not really happening, right? Like mm -hmm. intellectually, you know, that's not really happening. Intellectually, we know that the road is staying on the ground and it's the same size, but because of our cone vision, it looks on a flat surface, like it's going up like this. So yeah. that's what you're learning. Does that make sense? Yes. You're yes. learning it. And it's a long process <laughs> of learning. Like, I spent many years going, I spent many years saying um, to myself, really? <laughs> it's that big <laughs> or really? It's that small or really? It's over there or really? It's over here. She so spent a lot of time going, really? I didn't, I couldn't guess. Um, Olga, I am going to, I'm going to resend this. So Olga, you're in. I'm going to resend the cow picture. Thank Let you. Have it. Yep. So you're now in. Let's see here. Yep. Coming along. So Diana, really just keep pushing, keep pushing those dark light areas. So your light areas, uh, you're getting there but your light areas still really need to read as light. I'm not seeing the transition happening strongly enough in the cat yet. Okay. So, meaning that we're you're- talking about the face or are we talking Yeah, about I'm talking about the face only, the body's fine. Yeah. So I, when I, and I'll tell you exactly what I mean. When I see that turquoise and those oranges, they are yeah. not light values, they're medium values, they're mid-tones. Yeah. So they are not reading as light against dark. They're reading as medium against dark, which means that the contrast isn't as strong. So it's looking lovely, but I just want you to keep in mind, you still really need to push. If you're sticking with the what your kitty actually looks like, you still need to push oh. the contrast. <laughs> We've left that one. <laughs> uh, I, I can, yeah, I can push nice, it. Hi, Sandra. Bit. Well, I'm having trouble doing it. His ear is a little big. Which one? The one on the left? The one on the left, that's okay. Yeah, it should be shorter and fatter, I guess. Let's see, Anuja. Um, yeah, you're done, Anuja. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anuja, down here, I'm going to point. Uh, here, down here. You have that in a little bit. This should be, uh, look, this shape is a little bit smaller than how you okay. have. Do you see that? So. That's the only thing I see. Very sweet. In a way, it totally looks nice, but it's funny when you start to see the figure emerge from the shape, it's really fun. Like, it's like, a, so I like to think that uh, for a long time, the drawing is like, what? You're like, what? How is that possible? <laughs> no, what? No, what? Oh! <laughs> oh, finally. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, the nose of the cow on the left this guy looks like a cat's head. He does a little bit look like a cat's head, a kind of wide, fat cat's head. Yeah, the ears. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. Is that Maya or who? Oh, no, that's um, Julia, right? Meowing? No, Julia is not here. Who's no, that meowing? That was, was my lion. Oh, that was your lion, one of your lions. He's sitting, um, I'll show you. He's Let's sitting see. with me. If you guys want to see Sandra's cat. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see. So he just talked to me because Aww, I got a... These are the models. These are the models for all of us. <laughs> yeah. These are the models. Jean, where are your kitties? Are they wandering around? They're, they're actually asleep and not bothering me right now. Which How is, is that possible? Do they leave you enough room to sleep with? <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know this, those of you not in America, but in America today, we have all these American um, employees here because uh, Reuters, um, Reuters America office 
uh, determined that June, uh, June 19th, which is the abol abolition of slavery in the U.S., uh, officially, <laughs> is a national <laughs> holiday for the country. So all of these people are here are here because normally it's uh, 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning for them, and uh, they don't have, everybody doesn't have to work today. So they're, that's why they're able to pop in and, and visit uh -huh. this class. And I think that's important. I think I'm glad that Reuters did that. Um, yeah. Boy, it's yeah. such a mess here, but you know. The question is, is it gonna be a holiday next year as well? I hope so. Uh, right. Exactly. It should be. Temporary. I'm sure it will be. Um, Cuomo says in New York it will be. He's definitely making it a state holiday. So okay. Yeah, oh, no, and I, th I think Florida did too, actually, which is Florida. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> racist, horrible, like terrible state. Yeah, I got some press release this morning. How weird. So, I it's think uh, not Atlanta, I'm sure. And no, I know Oregon won't. Oregon is one of the worst. It's really, funny. it's amazing because I think of Oregon as enlightened, kind of on the right. West Coast, but right. the interior mm -hmm. is very religious, isn't it? No, um, no, no, no. Actually, believe it or not, the whole state is awful. So really? there, really? yes, I have really? never met more white people who are afraid of black people than I am here. Listen, in this uh -huh. state, it was illegal to be black and free until 1926. Are you kidding wow. me? In, to be, in Oregon. Yeah, in uh, where in the town where my boyfriend grew up in in sort of mid sort of uh, eastern Oregon, which is a very rural, a conservative area. There are actually tunnels underneath the city streets where Chinese people had to go after dark so that they wouldn't get killed. Chinese oh. people who came to work on the railroad in the 1800s. Underground. Uh, uh, actually, Oregon, at, at that point, Oregon, so there was all this, I mean, basically, there weren't any black people here because they were not, they were, ter they were driven off. And in the 1800s, the mid 1800s, they started building the railroads. So Chinese people, black people, all kinds of people came working on the railroads. And Oregon actually passed at that time, a set of laws that allowed you to beat senseless a black person. Oh my God. With the idea, yes, this is an absolutely terrible place uh, to be black. It is a horrible, horrible, horrible place. This is so amazing because yeah, when you think of America, are, horrible. You, you tend to think of the coasts are more enlightened than the center. I would think. But Oregon is like a white supremacist. I think the thing that scares me the most about Oregon, and you're really seeing it in the protests, there are a lot of white supremacists there, known oh. white supremacists. Uh, going in, beating, throwing shit, like, and they're not being, and they're very much in collusion with the police. Like, the police know who they are, well, and they're problem, working together. It? And it's horrible. Yeah, no, it's been so horrible. And I knew it was bad because I had, this is the first place I've been where I've had white friends who were terrified of black people. Like, I, I, I was like, I've lived all over the world, so I don't, I've never been like that. But I have a lot of white friends here who are Amy Cooper-like. And I think that really hit me hard when I started seeing how the protests were being treated. It was bad. Anyway, I shouldn't talk about it, but this is a terrible place. And every person I know here who is of color is terrified right now. They are scared. Really so how scared. did you end up there? Because of your boyfriend or? I, no, uh, I'm, I'm from the Northwest. So I'm oh, from okay, Seattle. From where? From Seattle originally. And that's a bit better Washington State, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same. Really? It's pretty shitty. Yeah, it's the same. Nice kind of oh great my work. God, so what we only have California. Yeah, Yay. Yeah. Um, no, it's a it's a pretty it's pretty I mean there are liberal people in there, but they're kind of ignorant white people. a lot of I and when I say I ignorant liberal white people, that's what I mean. There's a lot of ignorant liberal white people mm. here in Portland. And there's a lot of ignorant liberal white people in Seattle. But my family is here and nice work, Anna. really good work. My family is good. here and I can't escape it. And I certainly can't change anybody's mind if I am not here. So, but it's just a very depressing moment to kind of face how uh, yucky everyone, <laughs> how awful it is and how scared. Um, I always thought it was like an idyllic place, you know, full of trees and... It is pretty. It's very pretty. 
It's very and, pretty, but it's super and I did racist think it and was, super frightening. And I right it now, was more light and than Texas, say, you know, even Alaska, which has been populated by oil Texans. Well, you know, I told you guys about that farm that I visit. My friends who um, right. have the farm. Uh, so I have a black friend, black uh, landowner, a black farmer friend who owns this big farm in Washington. And he was like doing his, just working in his garden. In 2010, he lived in Tacoma, Washington. He was working in his garden and his neighbors came over his fence with machetes and tried to kill him. Why? Because, because he's black. Yeah. And he never had, he said he'd known him for five years. He had never, he couldn't even believe it as they're like coming over the fence. He's like, what, are, swinging these weapons. He's like, what are they, do? he didn't. And then they came at him and he survived. But I'm telling you, this is a scary, and he's a wonderful man. He's an absolutely wonderful man. This is a scary place. Uh, that is what I have really had to come to terms with as a white person here. And my activism has become very extreme because of that. So whenever anybody says, yeah, Oregon's all right, I'm like, it is not. Uh, and if oh, you scary. are a person of color here, you are terrified right now. You are Will terrified. You know when well, the I just, happened? What's that? Were you there in Oregon when Rajneesh Puram was a thing? Uh, uh, when was that? That was the 80s. Osho had his, uh, he had his. Oh, um, yes. Oh, totally. Well, I was in Washington, but the Rajneeshis were up there too. So okay, yeah. absolutely. We saw yeah, them up in Seattle. Was against pretty staunchly, against, like him, at, despite like all the sponsorships Nike had, he went pretty batch of crazy against yes yes uh, yes uh, that's <laughs> yes uh there was a really fascinating next netflix uh, yeah, yeah. documentary wild, wild oh yeah did you see it called wild wild country <laughs> so as a kid i remember seeing all of those cult members uh they all wore purple so you could tell who they were <laughs> so they, oh. were, like, they were they were all in they were everywhere and we all oh, you could kind of, tell sorry oh, oh yeah could you tell they, wear, they, they wore, wore purple wore robes. They wore purple robes and they tried <laughs> to recruit people. And they were a they, cult. <laughs> they, it was, they were a cult. It was fascinating. And uh, I th the documentary is interesting because it's a little bit more. It's like they, they interviewed the woman who, who was the mastermind, you know, kind of behind yeah. it. I mean, there was the Rajneeshi himself, but then there was this woman, Sheila, who really ran yeah. she was really the the power source and she's still around i mean she's in germany now yeah, yeah. running like working at an old person's home and she was she totally was willing to be uh interviewed <laughs> sheila yeah sheila was crazy but kind of fascinating like a kind of fascinating person like she wasn't it wasn't all it was an it was a mix of cultures that went kind of wrong <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like, I need to correct what I said earlier. Flor the governor of Florida just issued a proclamation um, honoring Juneteenth. I don't, I don't okay. think it's a holiday. Okay. But, June, you know. that looks great, by the way. Wonderful. Sandra, good work. You're, we're getting there. You guys are getting there. Nice work. Uh, the nostrils look a bit like cats. But seeing on the sides there. Yeah. yeah, but they're bigger. Yeah, they're well, just, much bigger, it's true. Obviously. There's like a the thing that little just the whole the whole sphere. Yeah, the shape the shape is exactly the same. Oh, Sandra, that reminds me. I was gonna look up. Let me see if I can do that now. I yeah, I try to find. Uh, I have skull. a book on cats, but it doesn't show a skull straight on. I looked up the skulls yesterday. Did you find anything? I didn't find anybody trying to draw a skull. I saw a time lapse. It wasn't that helpful, Let's see. but it was interesting how close the holes, because they're all holes, right, are to the, um, to the eyes, I mean, to the nose, is to the I eyes. Mean, if but you really want to get into you it, you buy, you buy one. Want to say hi? Oh, no, no, that would put me oh, on. Oh, hi, know if I did boo, hi. Diana's putting up her kitty right now. Aww. That's Julia. Hi, She's so brave. Look at her. Such a brave cat. She was hiding just, oh, months, was just so a month shy. or two ago. She was so shy. Okay, we can go. Um, did you get the other dog, Diana? Yeah. No, we didn't. Oh, why? We went to see him, and my, do my dog was really good with him. 
but my husband decided that it's too much uh, commotion in the house. Oh. Oh. So I feel so bad. Well, who's oh. going to take him? I don't know. Oh. No one has taken him yet. He stays at the at the. Maybe shelter. you could talk your husband into it. I'm trying. Yes, please. I'm Maybe trying. you should talk your husband. You got for those of you who don't know, Diana um, was Diana's. Uh, th this is a pet at their local shelter. So he was a uh, was he a guide dog or a police dog? Police a dog. Police dog, right? He was police a police dog. dog, and his owner died of COVID related issues. So there was three cats and two dogs, right? Yeah. In the, in the house. And they had to split everybody up. And the one dog that's left is this German Shepherd police dog that's totally traumatized because, you know, he had this family, this happy family, and now he doesn't. Diana was going to adopt him. Yeah. I think you're still going to do it. I just think he needs a little time to think about it. This one's a difficult do <laughs> and it was bring him home bring him home yeah and it was really sad because we went there it, it's a german shepherd rescue where we rescued our dog from and our dog had been there for 14 months he was oh. actually born there oh and he came back and he when we were like five blocks from there he started crying and he, <gasps> he was afraid you were going to bring him back yeah, and oh. he did not stop crying till till we were on the freeway on the back home. Oh, oh it's so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's a non-kill non shelter, so in another well, shelter, that's a good thing. I think you're still going to get him to do it. I think, <laughs> I think you're. <laughs> I just think, Diana. That. I think uh -huh. you. Yeah, we'll see. I'm working on it. <laughs> Can we all urge your husband into it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't be a meanie. <laughs> I will work for us. <laughs> Don't be a meanie. He just be like, shut these people up. Let's get the dog. <laughs> yeah, I should. We should. And he's an old dog, so I mean oh. that's that's Can't why see. no one will take him. You've got to take him. You've got to take him. <laughs> uh -oh. You have to. You have to. I know. Sorry, I, think it'll, I think it'll work out. Um, okay, where are we? Let's see. We're about halfway. In 10 minutes, we're going to take a little stretch break. We'll be halfway through class. And uh, I'll pull the thing down. And we will take a little break. And maybe I'll put it back up upside down after we get yeah. after a break. Yeah. But we're also going to spend a little moment to um, uh, to 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 see how, notice how we feel as well, like in the middle. And if you're feeling frustration, I want you to explore that frustration because that is it can be a good thing, a very good thing. So I refuse to do the ropes. I don't want to do ropes. You don't I have don't to. want to have roped up animals. Fair enough. Fair enough. This is at a, I think this came from a 4-H or country county fair or something like that. I was looking at the titles. Yeah, uh, Roan, the guy who owns this farm, uh, is like that too. He has a horse. He All his animals have kind of, a lot of his animals have come to him. I mean, he's bought some, but some have like come to him because, you know, they had stuff going on. He has a horse that does this, um, uh, that does this kind of belching thing. It is the funniest thing. So when you walk <laughs> by, the horse is like, he's chewing on, like, uh, he chews on this wood would uh, post until he makes a <laughs> noise like that, right? <laughs> and it turns out it's something that horse, some horses do when they're bored and it can be really bad for them. Oh. 
Oh, really? Oh, I know kind of wonderful. Wonderful. Do you want to add some uh, kind of, do you want to either add some color to that or do you want to uh, go over with like maybe a black and white marker with some areas? You totally could if you wanted to. It's up to you. I, I think I like it like this. I like it too. It's really good. You did great. And look at how fast you did that. Thank you. You did good. So you can just keep drawing with us and draw whatever you want and show us your drawing. Oh, Jean, doing. that's a nice one. Yeah, right? Yeah, take a look. Yeah, Jean, this is so good for your, so wonderful for your drawing. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, anyway, like, so the horse, like, at, what happens is it's kind of a nervous habit, like biting your nails or something. And some horses do it when they get bored. And what happens is they suck in so much air that the air actually turns to gas and makes them sick. And sometimes it will kill them. So oh. Roan, Roan, the this friend of mine who owns this farm, like I said, why is the horse doing that? And he said, you know, they they put these collars on the horses to get them to stop doing it. And he said, I cannot bear to have a collar on a horse. So he said, even if the horse doesn't live as long, like um, for, because of the habit, I'm just going to let him do the habit because it's better. And he said the horse has now lived for like seven years, way long. It's 12 years old. It's been doing this probably its whole life. It has lived way longer than anyone would expect. He's like, the horse lives. And I'm like, that horse is probably going to live longer than, like a horse can live up to 50 years or 60 years. Not so, really. So oh, 30. Like, it can live 30. 30. He said, so anyway, he said, I don't care. Like the horse seems to be fine, you know, like, <laughs> but if you walk by it and it's, it's burping constantly. <laughs> it's like chewing. You hear this chew, chew, chew. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that just so reminds me like, of... What? Sorry, go on. I'm uh, saying I, that was just from my sorry. What? You go. Are we doing the Zoom thing? We're yes. talking over each other. <laughs> I knew what you were saying. Yes. I was saying that just reminds me of the burping competitions me and my brother would have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little like that. You see it's who so burps funny. the longest and the loudest? <laughs> Here, I'll show you a picture. I'll send a picture across. The, so he's very fond of these horses. Anyway, all the all the animals on Roan's farm are like this. They they are free to do what they want to do. I like that. Um, yeah, you love them. Uh, we're getting we're getting ready to do a fundraiser. So I'll tell you guys about that too. But let me. Um, I'm going to send a picture across. I took a picture of Roan and the horse, so you can see. Here they are. There they are. There's the horse, the, the chewing belching oh. horse. <laughs> oh, nice. What's that? Beauty. Yeah. What's uh, his name? Uh, oh, crap. What is that horse's name? I think of it as the belcher. I can't remember. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to ask Robert. It, but it, that, it, the horse is like fine. He seems to have not died. You know, like even though this can be, this can hurt a horse, like this one, this horse seems to be perfect. Fine, just <laughs> chewing and belching and <laughs> sucking in air and doing Living whatever it else yeah. he's doing. It's so funny. Um, so just the other thing, beer. yeah, exactly. So it's interesting. So what he has, what Roan decided to do, he owns like 400 acres now uh, of land in central Washington. And he's been building these beautiful little um, cabins on it. So he has like five or six uh, cabins. Um, we stay in one when we go up there. They Airbnb it as well. It's a stunningly beautiful. And then they have, you know, chickens and goats and all of the things. So uh, he is going to start a school, a agricultural school to show oh, kids great. how to build and farm things. It'll be a two-year certified program. And he's going to pull kids from the play, he's mostly probably kids of color, but like he's really trying to create opportunities for kids so that they can learn how to do things for themselves. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're, so anyway, my boyfriend builds things. So he's going to help Ron build an amphitheater in part of the place. And I'm like, he has me doing paintings uh, that we're going to sell to like raise money for the school. 
and I'll probably, I hope I'll be helping teach them drawing. Uh, I said to him, you have to teach, everyone has to take drawing for at least six months. Every single one of your students, they have to learn how to draw. And he said, yes, okay. So we're talking about like setting that up. Anyway, he's a really great guy. Uh, you guys will see me posting on Facebook about him. Um, That was my cat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm finding it really difficult. I don't know why. What's that, honey? <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult. I don't know why. I'm not able um, to do it. So. It's, it's sometimes it's just, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Let's yeah, stop here. <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> moment. Let's take a break. Uh, and Rashmi, that was you, right? So you're going yes. pretty great guns. Here's the thing, Rashmi, you've been making incredible progress. So you're going to hit bumps like that where either your concentration isn't there. It's okay. It's okay. If it's not easy for you and it doesn't work, that's uh, as well as the others have, don't worry about it. Um, I know you are doing so well and you're, you're doing these drawings, you're producing these finished drawings that are really beautiful, but you're going to produce drawings that you don't like as we go through this process. It actually probably means that you're pushing beyond what you already know. So you're actually improving, although it does not look like it on the paper. Okay, so let's take the seventh inning stretch. Stretch. You might get up, walk around a little bit, just stand up. Shake your head clear. And I want you to notice how you're feeling. So Rashmi is, I'm, I'm guessing here, is feeling a little frustrated, right? Like you're a little frustrated. This is so good. This is the most, the best thing for your brain to feel this. So feel this. And while you're hating it, <laughs> understand it's exactly where you need to be. And it's progress. If things are too easy, it is not progress you're not making any progress. So really grasp that because how often in life do we get to feel that way and have it be, you know, not, you know, nobody's life depending on it, right? It's not like you're a brain surgeon. It's not like you're at work on the desk, right? Trying to like send something through and have it be inaccurate. So it's really wonderful. Ah, oh, yeah, there's Anuja. She's doing stretches. <laughs> So if you have that feeling of frustration, that's beautiful, that's good. That means you're exactly where you need to be. If it's easy and it's flowing, that's also great. But like, if you're like, ah, this is hard, that just means you're pushing it up a notch. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that I put this drawing upside down and you turn your drawings upside down and see if that it's helps time. you see this. It's time, <laughs> time. it's time. <laughs> Leah, I have to go. I'm actually working today. And I have to All start right, my work Lisa, day. thank you for thank joining you. us. This nice so seeing you. Hi, Lisa. We hope you'll join us again. again. Take we care, go. sweetie. Bye. 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 See you next Wednesday. All right, so I'm going to exit the full screen. Let me pull this down. Um, would you like to see the drawing with the lines on it, or would you like to see the actual drawing? Uh, the photograph with no the grid. The actual drawing, probably, because we're beyond the lines. Are you beyond the grid? Does anybody else feel like they need the grid? If, I'm, if I hear a no, then we'll... No. Yes, okay. So then I, let me grab, here, hold on. Then I'll grab the actual photo, and I'm going to put it upside down. And if you feel like you need the actual, um, if you feel like you need the actual, uh, uh, the, the, the grid upside down, I can do that too. But let's start with the photo. So everybody turn their drawing upside down. And remind me, why is drawing upside down helpful? What happens Because we process? see the shapes. Yeah. As opposed to trying to... Yeah. To so instead of right. saying what's happening with that nose or those eyes or, you know what I mean? You don't really think... It's sort of dis... Uh, it's sort of... Um, Disengages the left brain. Thank you. I just need you. It's a good thing you're in all my classes, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs>
I can regurgitate it. Uh, right. And help me. Yeah. And help. It's a, the other thing that happens for me is that when I'm in too much of the right brain, it's hard to find the words. Sometimes, particularly when I'm demoing, it's hard. So anyway, go ahead. Try looking at it upside down. Has everyone here hung out with cows or calves? Say that again. Has everyone here hung out with cows? Yeah, has mm. anyone hung out with cows? Who spent time with cows? Yes. No. I grew up I grew in the countryside, so we had, we had, actually didn't have cows, but we had calves. Oh, calves, even better. Yeah. My family had cows for a while. Really? Yeah, yeah. Did you have to milk them or take care of them or feed them? Uh, I, I have milked them, yes. So, so this was like my dad's side and we visited often in the summer. Nice. So it was yeah. like, you didn't have to take care of them all the time, but you had to yeah. help in the- for, for like a month, two months every year. Nice. Yeah. Nice. They're very affectionate animals. Cows are really great. I love being with cows. And I'll tell you what else is a great animal. Pigs are amazing. Oh, they're oh. supposed to be really smart. Pigs are just amazing. And I have this friend in Scotland who's got a farm. And when I visited her two years ago, we would go out and feed the pigs. She had, at that point, two quarter ton, so 250 pounds, um, like huge, huge pigs that had just given birth. So there was all these piglets, like 20 of them. 30 of us <laughs> running around and uh, we had fed them and we were sitting out in the field and one of the big pigs came walking up to me and just walked over to my back and spooned me. She collapsed. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it. I, was, I have a picture somewhere. I'll see if I can find that and show it to you. It was pretty amazing. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, this is the best thing. I'm in this muddy, completely muddy field, <laughs> like, being spooned by a quarter, you know, a 250 pound pig. <laughs> you know, uh, where you see pictures like that uh, um, in sanctuary farms, where they actually kind of cuddle with the cows and the pigs, and you can see how much they love it, the animals. Oh. So oh, affectionate they're family. very, they're very, and the pigs are particularly affectionate. Rashmi, oh, how you doing? Some are more equal than others. <laughs> you can't Why be you in there and not have had cow encounters. Yeah. yeah. They're oh. everywhere. Yes. I'm pretty sure the government's <laughs> bad at drawing this. <laughs> One day, I, somewhere here, I've got, let's see, what is a cover for uh, This picture specifically reminds me again of the time, again, I don't know, but probably thinking about my brother today, because there's another thing, where he and I used to go down to this dairy, uh, which had like a bunch of cows and calves to get milk early morning with a, with a canister with us on a bicycle. Oh, and we were in tiny oh that's morning. cool. I think I was in class four, he was in class seven or something. And I would just stand near the calves and pet them gingerly. And they had these oh. wet, huge, warm nose and steam coming out of the nose. <laughs> oh. oh, cool. Oh, here That's... it is. All right, let me see if I can save this. Happy memories. Save to phone. All right, I think I'm going to be able to put this up. So I'm going to try the on, the, on, the, on the WhatsApp page. I'm going to send you a picture if I can of our India. Oh, Sandra, very nice, coming along. Yep, yep. Claudia, great. Claudia, how are you feeling about that? I actually really like it. It's yeah. Better than the figure drawing, to be honest, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good, another animal ally for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I just need Here to wait. get a cat. <laughs> just need to get a cat. Here's the picture of the cow spooning, and all the piglets came running over. There we go. And this is, I think, I think oh. this is me at my happiest. I think wow. I am happier here 
Like, look, there she uh, is. This and is all, like a postcard. I know, right? And all the piglets <laughs> are running up trying oh, to. Oh, like, I love it. I want to have the piglets by then. Uh, the piglets were like just a, like 10 weeks or 11. Like, oh. They were like a couple months. They were not that old. Okay, Rashmi, just keep. Um, let's see, you've got your darks. You're doing good with the darks. I'm now lost without the so, notes. Rashmi, go ahead. I'm gonna here's my suggestion. Try and get in the main pictures. Okay, so there's a couple of things. One is that um the ear, his ear is too small here. Yeah. So make that so get that shape the right shape. You've got this thing bending, right? Like this. You've got your line bending, but this is a straight line. So yeah. I want you, this is a straight line. It's less curvy than you had it. You yeah, have, in fact, you have it bending in like this, like a crescent moon. And really this is more of a straight line. Are you looking at your drawing upside down so you can see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So yeah. I want you to try and outline these edges here so that you can start to get that shape of the cow. Here is his head on this side. Let's try with that line. Try this okay. line. Reshape the ear so that it's the right size. This one looks pretty good. And try and get the eye, in, uh, the eye is too small. So you're struggling to see today. I can see that, like you're struggling to see. So really work on making that eye bigger. Okay. If you want to, you guys have the drawing. I might put um, the grid back up so you can take a look. Yes, at it. please, I, I'm struggling with all yeah. the grid. Yeah, I think you need the grid. Oh, sorry. Yep, that's okay. Sandra, you got, and I've sent that to you guys, so you have it. I think what I'm going to do, yes, we'll take the yellow one, and then let's download that. That's okay. So you're struggling to see where things really are. So the grid is going to help you guys in this way. Uh, let me just rotate it. Okay, I'm going to stop the share, then I'm going to start the share. Hold on. Here we are. Okay. That's going to help you. Use these grids to create, see what the negative space looks like when you're shaping something. That's a good reminder. Nice, Aaron. Good work. Good work. Ooh, Jean, working on hands. Nice. Not exactly nice. It looks deformed, but hey. Uh, it's not, it looks like a hand to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hopefully come back on, Anuja, as you can. Power cuts happen. Um.
pigs. <laughs> Farm pigs. They're so great. I'm definitely a city person. Like I do city things and I live in the city and I can't really imagine not living in a city, but um, my absolute favorite vacation is to be on a farm. I cannot imagine not being on a farm. And we have 40 minutes, guys. So we've got plenty of time here to keep working. Leah, I'm going to run because I've got a bunch of stuff to get done today. Are you but working no, today or just errands I'm and things? Technically not, but I have to do some, some work. I have All to right, actually. so report to Reg yeah. how well this is, how, how great I will. these classes are. I will, I will. I'll tell him how great it is. And it was so nice to meet everybody. Hey, thanks, uh, Jean. Nice to see you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Aren't they great, you guys? Jean is Jean is the secretary to uh, or the assistant the assistant to the guy who decides whether we get to continue this program or not. So, um, so she is like, has been so helpful from the beginning in terms of moving things forward. She is like super, and she's just totally keen on art and it's been helping. Oh, nice Diana, there you go, coming along, getting there. Yeah, so. Nice. Mm, really rad. This is just turning out. I love the box too. I like what you did with the box color wise. It's fun. Yeah, it, the box is sort of the perspective. Yeah. Right? It's okay. It works. And don't mess with, um, please, please don't mess with the back. Don't touch the back, any, the back of the body. You know, the just spend all your time focusing on the head. The body is perfect. And if you do any more to it, you'll overwork it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I want the, the head to stand out. So. Yeah. Sandra, can you yes. see, look at Diana's latest version of her cat. And I want you to look at how the body is so loose, loose and a little bit blurry and a little bit more neutral than what's happening. She's a little bit neutralized. It's a little bit grayer. Not quite so you so focus vibrant. on the face, which is very colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not quite the colors of the actual cat. She's, she's <laughs> playing. I think we have an artistic license. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's that. The point is not to do that. But look, I'm just showing you like what's nice about this, what works about this painting is that some, we get to this point where we think everything has to be equally detailed, but that doesn't look right. Uh, if you're going to marry Cassatt, I call this the Mary Cassatt effect. You're Mary Cassatting it. <laughs> That's one of the most important things you have taught me. She, it, right? That idea of what's loose and, and this idea that compositionally everything goes to the face. Yeah. I have a painting I just finished. I'm debating on showing it to you guys, but I might show it to you. Um, that I'm really happy with, which I think kind of follows the Mary Cassatt model. Let me show it to you. It's here. I posted it yesterday on Facebook, actually. So some of you oh, the didn't see it. The family. Yes. That one. Right, and it's got a very here. Hold on. It's got. What I was really happy with. Uh, I played with the composition quite a lot. So it's got areas that are kind of simple. And then like things that are a little bit awkward, but pointing in the direction of the family. So I feel I'm like, oh my God, I married Cassad in it. <laughs> and if you look at the faces are all in shadow, but they're still pretty, there's enough detail. Oh, you hold it up. I'm looking at the up. Oh, you're looking at the, yeah, I'm actually holding oh, sorry. it up. Let me see, cause I'm not, oh, right. So I like it because there's this simplicity to it. Yeah. And then I, there's this I, weird I, little like cereal bowl, which is kind of like strange, which I always think of as like that sail on that boat in that Mary Cassatt painting. It's kind of strangely painted, but it's pointing in the direction that I want it to go. And it's kind of dark down here and really light up here. So the thing that's sort of showcased is the flowers, but when you go close, you can see 
the key, if the parent, the guys are back, the guys are backlit. And so I really, I was like, at the, when I finished this painting, I was like, I did it. <laughs> I did a Mary Cassatt. I managed it. I and of course she bought it. <laughs> so cool. Ah, Sandra, there you go. Nice. I think, I think I'm pretty much done with it. I think I you're mean, done. I think it's great practice. So jump into kitty cat stuff. Yep. Yeah, thank you. I think that's good drawing practice. Yes, it's useful that I do that. Mm -hmm. Very and nice. And I wanted to try the pastel without a uh, right. And your freehand drawing, which I think is in, which I think, and your freehand drawing, which I think is improving. So I but think I can uh, see why it's in, why you do that because um, basically I had to put in the mediums, whereas normally they would be there. Exactly. And also the mediums kind of like are everywhere. Can you see that? So they're kind of everywhere. Well, so big. they help is like that. So they help the, the, the joint. You could come here and make this lighter if you wanted to. Oh yeah, it's coming along. Yes, very good, Rashan. Great. Leah, have you ever tried drawing, uh, also rather painting the Great Wave of Kanagwa? Um, play, I'm sorry, say that again, hun. The Hawker's Light piece, the Great Wave of Kanagwa. Um, I used to draw like this when I was first learning to draw. This is how I draw. This is how I, I drew. Yeah. Yeah. This is how I taught. This is why I'm teaching you. But I also like this way because I feel like it's particularly a computer screen issue. Like I can put this up on the screen. You guys can see it. And with the, and with the colors, you can kind of see where to start and end. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is how I learned how to draw. I also took a lot of drawing classes. I mean, I did a lot of like stuff and I, I really, when I decided I wanted to learn to draw, I started, you know, drawing and painting like 20 or 30 hours a week. So I fit that wow. in with whatever other job I was doing because I wanted to get good. And I spent a lot of time, many years doing that. This is my 20th year, I think, drawing and painting. And I've noticed in the last three to four years, actually even in the last two years, it seemed to have clicked in at a different level for me. So, um, so it's, it's, it's definitely something, I'm now much better at being able to sort of assess what's happening on the flat surface, but that's only because I've spent so many hours working on it. And it doesn't actually mean that I won't come to a subject that isn't working right that i'll have to somehow do something else for so it's interesting that like i i still haven't quite that doesn't mean i won't have trouble with the painting or it won't be hard i actually struggled with the faces on this one quite a lot on this painting that i just showed you guys what is uh, mary cassatt for the, I mean. ah what is mary cassatt great question hold on and I will teach you a little art lesson. Wait, I might even have her book here because I refer to her so often. So Mary Cassatt was an American painter in the sort of turn of the century. Um, she lived with her family. She didn't get married, I don't think. Uh, she was a contemporary of the Impressionists, Degas. In fact, Degas, Monet, all those. And in fact, she was the only, Degas, you know, the guy who did all the ballerinas, um, she was the, he was the only, she was the only one who could stand to be around him. He was a real jerk as a human. <laughs> and in fact, like when he died, I think she was the only one who went to his funeral. Like that was how hated he was because he was so angry. Um, so that is shorthand for saying she's incredibly talented uh, female artist who um, kind of revolution, who was really into impressionism and, um, and, and the possibilities of it. She worked in pastel a lot and oil. And uh, here, I'm gonna drop the share down for just a minute to show you a little bit about Mary Cassatt. Go ahead and put me in speaker view and you'll see. Here she is. So this is Mary Cassatt. She did all these really intimate, beautiful portraits. This is a pastel portrait. Uh, of women and children. So, you know, she had this, like no one I think has ever really painted like her before or since, like her way of doing it. And this is a pastel drawing. And notice that everything is so detailed here. And as you go down, look at how loose everything gets. 
So she really played with this idea of how few lines do I need? And compositionally, what do I need to do to direct the looser areas to come up and sort of get you to focus on this area? So her best example of that is probably, ah, here's, she painted her sister a lot. So here's her sister at the opera in oil, right? And then here's a, a similar pic picture of her sister in pastel. Can you see? They're beautiful, aren't they? She's a star. She's a very. We can't see her bit. Um, ah, here we go. Loose. That? That's better. There we go. Right. So, yeah, Look already... at her hand. It's like a claw. You don't even notice. So notice. These things are all directing us towards her face. The lights here are looking very dancey. This is dark and kind of neutralized so we don't see it. We've got this reflection that's also pulling us here. This light here is kind of all moving us towards this face. She is a master at that. Her, I think the one that shows it the best is probably this one. Ah, she once got into a fight with Degas. Because Degas said, you can't, he said, women can't paint. And so she took, yeah, he was a dick. He was a dick. Right. <laughs> he was, he was a jerk. A badass. Yes. And her response was to take an uh, ugly model in a awkward pose. And she painted it so beautifully that even he said, yeah, you're right. You can paint. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so she took the most difficult challenge and like just knocked it out of the park. Um, so here is the one I wanted to show you. So this is an oil painting. If you can look at it, it's hard to see here. Look at how everything, all the shapes are pushing us towards the baby and the mother. So this is pretty, there's some detail in here, but not very much. This looks like somebody just went, but you don't even notice it because look, it's like directly pointing you. So compositionally, she was really brilliant. So when I say you marry Casada, it means you like, so in Diana's case, she's neutralized the back of the cat. We still see it, but it looks fuzzy and indistinct. It looks a little grayer so that everything and her box as well. Uh, everything is kind of directing us to the face of a cat. All the detail goes there. And I'll show you one or two more um, towards the end. Oh, yeah, this is a really beautiful one. Look at how. Yeah, the baby is so vague. Uh, yeah, look at I mean, the, she can do everything. It's not like she can't, but yeah. This stuff is all loose so that we are brought up here, but the shapes of this and the colors of this and the movement of this bring us into this. So that's what composition really is, right? Like that's composition. We think we have to draw everything the same level or paint everything the same level, but really it's more about having areas that are loose and areas that are tight about having uh, things in the painting positioned so that you're not going off right? If, um, if this painting did not have a bowl here in the corner, what would happen is if this was not here, you would just go off. So even though it's a little awkward looking, it keeps us in frame as opposed to just right, following the shapes and go, there's nothing here. There actually was a uh, the box for the game was here and I initially put it in and then I didn't like it. I was like, it's too cluttered. So I wondered how it would look. So I just added some color in, right? So I'm going like this. So what you want are objects that will bring you in and out. And then there's this light area, which naturally brings you here. Uh, there's the flowers here in the center, which it brings you down to here, right? And then there, the way the dark and the light kind of play off each other, the dark and the light places, allow there to be kind of a quieter space here. And it's not, it doesn't feel weird. I don't know, it's funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this would look as good without this. Yes, it Even though it's a kind of awkward. Uh, so that's what I mean. Like she's, she taught, that's, she's my idol. I talk about her quite a lot here. I'll put up the share again. Um, 
That's who Mary Cassatt is. You'll hear, you'll hear me refer to her again and again. I have a few artists that I just love. Here you go. That's my seat. Where can I sit here? Where can I sit? Let me see. Can do? It's all about the beach here. Right here. It's right next to me. Maya? No, it's not Maya. No, it's Lion. This thing is quiet. The lion. He's, He's trying talking. to find a space to sit. Uh, right. uh -huh. so, yes. I, that's why I muted myself. <laughs> Maya's crying too. That's all right. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's looking where the sound is coming. He thinks I'm taking a lot of room, which I am. <laughs> Jean? Oh, is anybody here, somebody who's got uh, experience with uh, pan pastels? Jean just left, sadly. Oh. I don't think anybody else here has worked with pan pastels. Because um, I did a terrible job in my underpainting yesterday, and I think probably it was because... Um, the wrong colors? Do you want to show it to No, me? My, my soft tools were uh, used, so I didn't get sharp edges. So it's a bit oh. all over the place. But I have many that came with a set. I just didn't know that you're supposed to change them so often. I mean, it's nothing that's not fixable, but I would kind of wanted. Um, show it to me. Can you show it to me? Oh, it looks horrendous. That's okay. But I'm, I'm going to fix it. It just looks terrible. Oh, fix it and then, okay, fix it and then bring it. And if, and if it doesn't okay, fix you. the way you want to, then you can send, then you can send it to you. me. And if you want right to, you now can send it to me privately as it's well. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, we know what you can do. Don't you worry. Everybody in the whole company knows what you can Let's do. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there has been plenty of embarrassment feeling <laughs> when Emma's kids show up. <laughs> I know, they do good. They do pretty good. They're so good and they're so fast. <laughs> But they didn't start out that way, to be fair. They've had some. They've had some help. No, I have learned. You have said it so many times, and now What's I have that? learned <laughs> that this is not, well, obviously, this is not a competition, but also because kids are in a different plane than us so long as they are. Learn. 
hard goes. So there are you kids are used to the idea of learning all the time. They're learning all the time. It's normal for them. They're not expecting to be great at things. They're expecting to learn things. So they have less pressure on themselves. Whereas adults have gotten to be good at something. Uh, you've gotten to be good at a lot of things. And it's hard to put yourself in the space of not knowing it. It's very vulnerable. Um, and that's why kids are so great to have in an adult art class because they help. They're pretty fearless about most things, kids. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I was trying to learn how to ski. Um, that is pretty brave. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, they're pretty. They're fearless in a way. We worry a lot about consequences, and we worry about what people think. Yeah, um, and and we worry about not looking competent. Mm. Um, and the, you know, like yeah. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we worry about that. <laughs> But what we learn is that going through these hard parts, having a session that doesn't draw a class that doesn't go well, where you can't get anything right, or you know what I mean, you're trying to do a drawing, it doesn't work when the last three did, the last four did. What we learn is that um, that feeling of things not working is actually showing us, pushing us to go forward. And it also means that you know something because before you didn't know anything. So it was easier to kind of skip over a lot of things and be, you know, sort of essentialized. And the more you know, the more you have to integrate in. Um, when I teach figure drawing, uh, as those of these guys, um, when I teach figure drawing, uh, uh, as these guys can tell you, each week, everybody learns a new technique, but they still have, they can't forget the old technique. So by the time you've gone through figure drawing for eight or 10 weeks, you've learned eight or 10 techniques that you have to incorporate into drawing the figure. And that is really hard. <laughs> everybody kind of absorbs it in. Then I make them do it again a year later and they do it again and they have to learn those same eight techniques again. And then it's a very interesting, uh, thing to see what happens in that year if you're continuing to do art and do other things like what happens you build on that knowledge um, It's so fascinating Olga nice nice whoa would you whoa Although I think his I think his little nose is this one on this on the here the one that I'm pointing at the nose is bigger can you see that? Yours is a little bit more square, and this is a little bit more rectangular and wide. Can you widen yeah, out his nose like a little this, bit? Like, the second cow looks for me like a small elephant, actually. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. His, it's, cause, like it's just because his face is too narrow. So mm -hmm. widen up his face a little bit, and then you can and deal with that accordingly, and then you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But very nice. I can see you're all like sort of um, adapting to charcoal. Charcoal is real fun. So for those of you who are wondering what it is these people are doing, uh, they've actually taken charcoal, not a pencil, but the actual messy sticks of charcoal, and they've toned the paper. So actually behind me, if you can see my screen, you'll see a toned paper. So you start by toning the paper, by rubbing the charcoal all over it, and then you actually start by erasing rather than drawing. So this is the oh. beginning of a figure drawing where erasing is happening. So that's what people are doing. And uh, it's a very different way of drawing and it sure is fun. It's totally fun. So you make the outlines by uh, erasing instead of doing uh, yes. In fact, we made the outlines without erasing, but uh, I don't really have people draw in outlines in this one. In this one, okay. I have them actually erase the lights. Okay. And then so you start all dark. The darks. So, and then, so you start kind of middle dark. And then you pull the lights out with an eraser. So you go, you don't really do the outlines. You do this area and this area and up here and over here. 
and down here and the rope, right? Anything that's light, you do here. We do this area. And then you go back in with the edge of your charcoal, like a pencil, and you add in the very dark areas. And then you add the outlines. So it's like, we call it subtractive drawing. Uh, it's a very different way of drawing. Uh, ladies, for those of you who have done, yeah, so Claudia's, oh no, Cla Claudia, you did, did you do that, Claudia? Did you do the subtractive drawing? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So can you talk about subtractive drawing a bit? It looks wonderful. What uh, is the, okay, for you, your experience of it? Uh, well, it's kind of, I mean, you have to kind of just go with it because I'm very attached to the lines. So it was very hard for me to kind of give that up, but you basically, you, um, you just take your, an eraser and you go for the widest and the biggest spots first and then you kind of create, you know, you're drawing by really um, taking out these white areas and then you kind of work from there and you, you kind of, um, you don't really look at the animal, you really think of it as a shape, as different shapes and that, that you can form. So it's, Kind it's of different. Everything you, your brain tells you to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and that's why also upside down, doing it upside down really helps because that way your brain just kind of gets knocked out and you just go for it. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you see the shapes more. So it's very fast. It's really fast. So what because it does, yeah, go ahead. You've already Sam. got all the values in a way. Right? Yes. Mm. It's very messy which is what, what I didn't like, but it's amazing. How quick The thing is that because it's so messy, you think you've got it okay and then you smudge it as you continue working. I didn't like that bit. Oh, smudging is so much fun. Well, no, because then you have to start doing the lights all over again. So but we need a different eraser for charcoal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you need a, something so called a needed it. eraser. Which yeah, is I think like, I have it. I had. I think I sh I'd shown you my pencil. I have the eraser as well. Yeah, it keeps um, going. Like you, you have to keep needing it. I think I. It's have like, it. it's like silly putty, right? Yeah. Like it's like that. I'll try this as well. I, yeah. I'll sh and I'd be happy to demonstrate that in the next class if you guys want me to. Yes. Um, I'll send you the materials that you need. It does not work. This is not a technique that works. So, Claudia, that is a great description. So basically what she's saying is, instead of paying attention to outlines, she's paying attention to dark and light shapes and how they fit together. And what, that, what this technique forces you to do is to think about the dark, the biggest dark and light shapes first, like this one, like this one, like this one, like this big dark shape, right? Like this big light shape. It forces you into thinking about the bigger shapes and working around the whole figure. Whereas if you're with pencil, you can get very caught up in a very small area and spend, you can spend your whole time just working on here. But the charcoal and the erasing technique really, so not having those lines can feel kind of insecure, but what it forces you to do is really deal with uh, what are the bigger light and dark shapes. And here's a thing that's confusing for people. Um, uh, shadows kind of fall across various parts of the body. So you might have areas where you can't see what's happening because a shadow has fallen over it and something else. So you need to learn how to deal with like what we call lost edges, right? Where you know there's a leg there, but you can't see it because it's in shadow. So you don't draw it if you can't see it, but instead what you draw is, is the darks and light shapes that you can see. So it really kind of forces you to think. I think of it as like the same as writing an outline for a story. That's what I like to think about it as. If you're writing a story and you're trying to figure out what to put where, it's like the bigger ideas get outlined. Um, you don't think about, you know, it's not like every sentence comes, you know, perfectly. You have to have a structure upon which, a bigger structure with the bigger ideas upon which to hang your details. So we can't really get to deep, but our, our instincts, our instincts are, our, our wrong instincts <laughs> are to go right to the detailed area, draw, draw, draw it until I get all the detail and then move outwards. But we've learned why that doesn't work. That doesn't work because we don't know how big or small things are. We're bad at assessing how big or small things are. 
uh, on a canvas. We also don't understand like when things are closer to us, they're bigger. When they're farther away, they're smaller. So his ear here is really big because it's close. His head is turned towards the camera. This ear, we know these ears are the same size, but this ear is like half the size of this one. And this ear is, uh, be, and because this ear is turned, it's actually smaller. It's about, this ear and this ear are about the same size. Because he's farther away, this ear is the same size as that ear, but because he's farther away, it looks smaller. So we have to learn to understand these things and our left brain doesn't really account for that kind of thinking. This is what visual thinking is. It's looking I can at use pieces. soft charcoal pencil for this, uh, for prepping the page. Uh, for uh, you cannot. Paper. That won't work. Um, it's okay. too strong. It's too strong. You actually need charcoal sticks. Here, I'll show you. Okay. You actually you may need to order them. Um, you, you need sticks like this. Okay. And there, I'll send you some links after class. I'll send you guys awesome links after class. Um, it's what charcoal is, is burnt wood. So this is yeah. a bag of like burnt wood from a forest, from forest fires. And it gets cut into little pieces. And so you'll either- I have charcoal. I, I have charcoal. I use it for cooking. Like I use, I use it for a cooking technique in my biryani. Yes, uh, yes, I have that. You really? the same charcoal. Is it yeah, the same we, charcoal? We, you could try it. I don't know if it's the same charcoal. I'll show you. I, I, I'll send you the picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, are you saying burnt wooden pieces? Yeah. Why same. don't you try it right now? Why don't you try treating a piece of, um, why don't you try okay. toting a piece of paper and then trying to pull something out with the, a white area out with your eraser. So we see if it works. Sure. I'll do that. Let's try it. How do you use charcoal in cooking? Uh, so we use it to, uh, uh, so there is a technique called um, uh, dumpukt in Indian cooking, where you just you know burn the piece of charcoal over the over uh, over the gas, and then you just put it in a in a small bowl, and then you put a little bit of oil on it, like clarified butter, which is ghee, and then you put a little a, a few cloves on it, and you put it in the middle of the dish of your biryani or meat whatever you're cooking and you just close the lid and you turn off the gas and you just keep it like that so that smoke it gives a smoky effect to the entire dish oh and it elevates the dish to an entire level fascinating can you send us the recipe that's <laughs> probably very complicated <laughs> but i love it yeah oh okay. how fascinating yeah so i'll get the chocolate Try it, see if it works. Yeah, eventually, you guys, I want you to move away from the grid. Is anybody ready for me to turn this right side up? Are we ready? We've got like 15 minutes left. Or do yeah. you want me to just keep it? OK. Uh, do you want to keep the grid, or do you want to look at the photo without all the stuff? 
keep it, I think. Keep the grid. Okay, hold on. Let me go get it. Let me go get it again. Sometimes when I switch from screen to screen, there we are. There we are. So the grid is helpful. You'll get to the point eventually where the grid will not be necessary. I'll move you there, but let's go. Let's take it slowly. Also, I'm going to introduce charcoal, and uh, later I'm going to introduce ink, pen and ink, um, in a painterly kind of thing. And then eventually, I'd like to introduce um, I'd like to introduce uh, pastels. So uh, slowly, I'm going to have you start building up your stores, and then we'll move to painting for those who want it. So. But I want you to spend a significant amount of time drawing first, because if you can't draw, you can't paint. So the drawing training is important. I have a question, Leah. I was mm. trying to help Claudia find that uh, newsprint. Mm -hmm. And we had a very hard time. And in the end, out of a most well-known online French art supplier, we yeah. found one pad, and it was imported from the UK. Right. Do you think that it's because the French don't use the subtractive method or can it be used with another kind of paper? I think it can be used, it must be used with another, that's a good question. I feel like this is a fairly classic technique um, and I don't know the answer to that. It's weird that it's so hard to find it. Um, so it may be that they have some, they had like what they, they call They might have something paper. different that just is like slightly a different texture. Um, I mean essentially what like what newsprint is is recycled paper but it also is soft right it's got this sort Smooth, of softness yeah. smoothness so that the past the first layer kind of sinks in and then the other and then the other layers kind of sit on top to give it depth um so i, I don't know that's a but let me see if i can let me do a little research myself yeah I'll, i think I'll i have a couple of well. french no, artist but I know, friends but it's called subtractive yeah but subtract yeah, when I tried explaining to the person in the store that it what was you were doing <laughs> what I was looking for, he didn't even know what I was talking about. Like maybe it isn't something that's done in France. It's weird. That seems weird to me. It must be done somewhere, but maybe it's not a classic. I don't know if it's a classic technique, but I was talking. It's American, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe don't they know. Just use a different paper. I mean. Yeah, I don't know, or maybe they don't do it. Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good, that's a good, let me see if I can do some research now. I just is, have, have been so, it's so part of my training and, and it's part of the training that I got at a very realistic, academy, you know, like, like drawing academy in the US. So I assumed that this was something everybody did, but maybe it isn't, might be. Uh, it was so easy to find in the US, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's because uh, figure drawing is so huge in the US. Maybe it's not as big in, it's very big for figure drawing. Because it's only for figure drawing in you. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, it's used for every, you know, anytime you're using charcoal, it's used. Uh, so if you're doing a still so life class, you'll do it. That's a thing is that the French seem to use charcoal on a different kind of paper. That's so interesting. Mm. And it's, I mean, not, an easy to, and it's not as easy a paper to erase, right? It's not as easy to erase. That's the sense I'm getting. And also, like, if you look at uh, Claudia's um, cows, there's, like, a texture to there's it. There's texture. Yep. Yep. So this is, like, something with less texture. Well, anyways, we're learning. I'm just curious. Yeah, me too. I'll, so I'll see. Let me see what I can find out. I'll ask. A, I'll just okay. start asking. Would yeah, I don't think that's quite it. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. glad we tried it. I'm glad we tried it. Yeah. Uh, let me, Rashmi, but it's good. We might as well try it, right? Just to see if it works. Um, it's kind of treated and softened in a particular way so that it spreads easily. Um, and it's on, it's on normal uh, printer paper or do you need a different? No, you need, this is what we were discussing is you need a different kind of paper for it. You need a kind of soft recycled paper that feels a lot like newspaper you know, newsprint. So I'll send you links to what you can order. Um, and then uh, as we were just, Sandra and Sandra and I were just discussing, Claudia is in France right now. Sandra is French and there's, they can't find it so in France. So it may not be everywhere, but it's definitely in Britain. And, and in fact, in fact, um, and I looked at Jackson's and Jackson's maybe had one or two. One, things. Not yeah, one in the UK little either. packet of it. Yep, I saw that in Jackson's as well. 
I saw that. So and the I one will... we found in France was imported from England. Right. So maybe they don't. I'll do. I'll do a little research. I'm curious now. Good. I mean, thank you. I've been wondering. And I don't even know if what this is called is called subtractive drawing. In fact, I never called it that way. Um, I called it drawing with an eraser. And then when I taught a class at Reuters last week, uh, Jessica Pryor in New York called it subtractive drawing. So I was like, oh, I like uh, how that so sounds. Maybe she... So I, she maybe made it up or maybe that's what it's called. I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting. I like to say that I have a fair amount of classical education, uh, although I didn't get it in the traditional way. I took classes from realist academies in the US and then I spent two years working in Hungary uh, with artists, uh, Hungarian artists, and then I spent two They years. did it there too, in Hungary? Uh, they did not, as far as I know, although I taught it because it had been taught to me. So I ended right. up teaching figure drawing and I had people do that. So maybe it is just very unique to this one, who knows? <laughs> like, but I find it so helpful. It's like such a helpful uh, thing. It's yeah. also because it really teaches you so also to focus value. on negative space and value uh, and bigger shapes won't allow yeah. yeah and and also seeing how these dark shape the bigger darker shapes versus the smaller stuff it's hard not to focus on an animal's eyes when you're looking at them right side up but really there's so many like this whole area is like really a dark area with a little bit of light right um this is a whole dark shape this is a whole dark shape. This is a whole light shape, really, with just a little bit of dark in here. So it really helps you see, okay, if I'm dealing with the bigger shapes here, I'm working the edges of where a dark meets a light. Let's see, Diana. Oh, yes, she's coming. It's just she's coming. The values, are, it's fantastic to make you see values. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to understand values and the importance of values, values and shape. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Do you have any tips on how to draw the eye to make it look like it has life? Well, you know what I'm going to tell you. Stop you thinking really about it as an eye. Stop thinking about it as the eye, and start looking at the shapes and the values. So, this is a dark. This is very dark, and then in here are. So I'm going to talk about it in that way. This is a light area. This is a light shape. Little light line. This is a little light line. There's a tiny light area here. There's a medium area here and then a dark area next to it. And then there's this sort of light shape, right? So it's looking, it's looking at the details of the dark and light shapes. I'm trying to really recreate those. So getting that dark shape first and then adding in those lights and those mediums, medium shapes around it. That's how, the, that's how you get the eye. That's how you get the detail of the eye. Um, I mean, there's some tricks to it, but I, I think it's much more helpful to think about it in those terms, to think about everything in those terms. Don't think about the eye. Don't think about it as an eye. Just look at it as a dark shape with light and medium shapes in and around it. Indeed, I saw a video the other day of a woman who nice. was, I was, look, nice, I was watching it because she was doing a pan pastels and she was annoying because it, it went on forever. Yeah. But when she came to the eyes, and I was kind of scrubbing it, you know, going a bit faster. Yeah. I suddenly looked at the eyes and I thought, my God, they look fantastic. And I yeah. went back to what she was doing and she didn't do anything special. She was just really just the colors. Working the details. Just, the, yeah. just, it was just shades. That's all it was. It's shades and details. So it's really like that with everything. Um, a lot of eyes have a reflected area in them, but in this particular case, it's not, it's not easy yeah, to but, see. But, these we'll cows have a little are white well. dot at some point, but these cows aren't really, they, that's not how the light is working for them. Um, I will at some point show you how to draw eyes though. Gosh, great, you guys, wonderful. Tony, great work. Olga, great. Nice, nice. Tony, are you proud of yourself? Those are some pretty cute cows. I'm amazed that I drew them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I thought thing. you would be. All right, so this is a good moment. We're going to stop the share for a second. Oh, we're fantastic, Olga. Uh, yeah, really great, you guys. I'm going to put you in gallery view. It's so only, they see definitely you all. look like cows. Yeah, 
Uh, okay, so now I'm going to ask you the question I've been asking. How do you feel now? Like I don't want this to end. <laughs> that's yes. wonderful. Oh my God, that's fantastic. How else do you, how does everybody feel? How do you feel now at the end of class? Be honest. If you didn't feel, if you don't feel at great, that's okay. Um, let's observe what, I would like to hear why, so we can talk it through. Oh, wonderful, Anita, wonderful. Amy, lovely, lovely. Anusha, you have a very good sense of value, strength of value. You really push your value, contrast in your values, and that's gonna help you. So is anybody feeling better than they did at the beginning of class? Yeah? Yes. More relaxed? Totally. Yeah? Tired? Is anybody tired? Is anybody annoyed at the end of class? Are you like, no. yeah, I know you would be Rashmi and Philip. So, uh, so your drawings did not turn out the way you wanted them to. That is also okay, right? That's okay. It's okay to feel a little bit like, damn it, that did not go as well. And so my question to you is, what can we do to make this go better? your next drawing go better. Did you learn anything about what you didn't want to do, a, a mistake that you didn't want to repeat? Have you learned anything? What did you learn? I learned I should have done the subtractive method. Yeah, Sandra learned she should have done the erasing method. Philip and Because it Rashmi. was too annoying. Yeah. Find the big tones. What, was, what did you struggle with the most? I struggled with the shading. Yeah. So hold yeah. it up. Let's see. Can we hold it up just to see? Sure. Oh, dude, that's gone great. That's great. It's actually, it's actually better. It's, a, it's actually quite good. You just need to keep going. There's mm -hmm. complexity here. So I, I, so you struggle with uh, getting too much into the detail. So here's what I would say to you next time. There's a lot of detail in this cow, right? Lots of little tiny details. I would focus on getting the big shapes, the difference between the lights and darks and the big shapes first before you start getting into detail, right? Get those down first. So go over the whole cow and get the major light and dark areas. Shade those first before you start adding in detail. Because if you do that, you're gonna have more of a feeling of the cow coming out and then you can focus on the detail. I think you just went into detail too quickly. And Rashmi, what about you? What do you think happened? Were you just tired today? I might have just been tired. Yeah. Or, or was it too much detail? Or were you struggling to see the shapes? Yeah, I was struggling to see the shapes. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's just not proportionate in my eyes. Like, you know, so it sounds I don't to me struggle like struggle so much. It sounds to me like you had a left brain, you had a left brain problem, a melt, a left brain meltdown. So you thought that things should be different than they actually were, uh, right? On the cape paper, and that's the fight that you had with yourself, right? The fight that you had yourself. So that what you really need to do is tell yourself, this is not going to look like I think these. When I follow this formula, these shapes are going to look weird to me, and you have to accept that right? Accept that they're going to look weird. Accept that this drawing is going to look awkward before it looks good. Um, and that is a hard thing for people to accept. It's very hard to give yourself the patience uh, to like do that. You know what I mean? Like do that for yourself. And Rashmi, I know you can draw. I mean, I know you can draw. I know you can. So you, we, I, I introduced a slightly more difficult subject. There were two creatures, you can see their bodies, and the bodies are very, like, they aren't very, because the faces were coming toward us, the bodies look very small and distorted. You just have to accept, oh, that's not like how I thought it would be. And as you start to fill in the light and darks, the bigger lights and darks, it will come together. So accept mm -hmm. the awkward phase, and that yeah. will push you forward. My guess is you're also probably a little tired. <laughs> and it's harder to focus. Like, it's harder yeah. to focus. So anyway, I'm very pleased that this has happened to you because now you know that it happens and now everybody knows that it happens. And one day, you know, every once in a while you'll finish drawing and you'll be like, I'm so irritated. That did not work. Yeah, out, you know? I'm not finished yet. I'll work on it. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll get up in the morning. I mean, that's what I did last week as well. And get up in the morning and see it fresh. I yeah. myself am a morning person. I cannot do yeah. evenings <laughs> at all. 
So I and totally it gives you a different it. perspective with the sunlight. I think yeah. it really does. It really does. So anyway, keep going, but know yeah. that that frustration and the I can't quite get it done. There's ways that we can talk about it to to make it easier the next time. So I'm going to remember this about you too, and I'm going to be checking on your work more uh, as we go into the next lesson to make sure that you're not getting too caught up in the details, right? Yeah. Too soon. All right, everybody. Great. And I appreciate you sharing that because I know it's like, you know, it's the, like, I appreciate you sharing it because it helps everybody to like, to hear that. Okay. Did I get uh, too dark with my, I sent you another picture. Did I get in too dark? No, the darks are where you need to be. That, yeah. That's where you need to be. It's not too dark. It's working. She's looking great. Might be done. Maybe. Maybe. Sit on that one for a minute. Yeah. Okay. All, all right, everybody. We'll see you uh, next week. Um, Thanks, feel free Leah. to join. I will Bye. email you details about a free class that I'm going to be offering that I think will be at a good time for you all. Let's see. I'll check and see. Um, uh, it's a beginning class, so if you're and you're welcome to join it if you want to. Okay. Thank you, Leah. Take care, everybody. Take Thank care. You. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.